Okay, everyone, it's uh, 2.05 p.m. here in Marlboro, Massachusetts. My name is uh, Peter Bannon. I'm the sales manager of the Eastern District, and I hope everybody's uh, doing well out there in this um, challenging time. Um, today, uh, we are going to be speaking about LCR meters uh, among the uh, various products and AT solutions that Cromer is involved in. LCR meters is certainly one of them. Um, Cromer are test and measurement experts, and uh, we're involved in a lot of electrical test instrumentation and automatic test equipment uh, from AC power sources and electrical safety testers to grid simulators for grid connected devices, um, passive component testers is what we're going to speak about today. Uh, we make excellent DC power supplies and battery cyclers uh, and battery simulators, uh, as well as electronic loads for uh, programmable electronic loading um, and power meters uh, that are single and multi-phase power measurement devices. And uh, we also make automated test systems where we take the test instrumentation, software, fixturing, we build it all for our customers. Our customers might not have enough time to do it themselves. They may not have the expertise. We are expert, and it's probably probably about 25% of our business, the automatic test systems. We're shipping probably 10 to 15 a month right now. And we also um, have software for all our instrumentation and automatic test equipment. Um, uh, proprietary software, we have soft panels for the instruments. We have uh, LabVIEW drivers if you wanna uh, use LabVIEW. So a lot of different uh, capabilities, obviously. So today we're gonna talk about LCR meters. I wanted to start by uh, talking about what basically is an LCR meter. It's a piece of electrical test instrumentation that tests inductors for L, capacitors for C, and resistors for R. It can test um, different kinds of uh, components, uh, but it can also test materials, cables, sensors, motors, antennas, transducers, connectors, and other devices. So it's a very versatile passive component test, uh, piece of test equipment. Where do you use LCR meters? Well, they're used uh, in uh, many electronic companies from production tests. There are automatic handlers in some production tests or even incoming inspection applications where reels and reels of components might be placed with a pick and place machine onto printed circuit boards. A lot of times they might wanna check the capacitor, the inductor, the resistor before they place it on the board, or at least check that the reels have the right batch of capacitors that's gonna be placed on the right coordinate on the printed circuit board. But these are also used in laboratories like R&D labs where they wanna design uh, new products for their companies. And of course, uh, resistors, capacitors, and inductors are gonna be uh, very important along with all sorts of other active components, microprocessors and transistors and integrated circuits. Uh, quality assurance departments, quality control departments use LCR meters. And uh, failure analysis labs, we sell to quite a few where their product might have failed and they want to find out what failed on it. And so it could have been an LCR component, certainly. The first device, uh, the C of LCR is capacitor. And a capacitor basically stores electrical energy and it gives this energy again to the circuit when necessary. It blocks the flow of DC and permits the flow of AC. As you can see, there's two metal plates with a dielectric between the metal plates. And you have leads coming off of this particular one, but there's a lot of chip 
devices right now, of course, for many, many years, millions of tantalum capacitors made every day, billions of ceramic capacitors probably made every day worldwide. Um, and so this is a storage device with a dielectric in the middle. Um, so it basically charges and discharges the electric charge stored in it, in the circuit. Um, the most common use is energy storage, but you can also use capacitors in power conditioning applications, signal coupling or decoupling applications, filtering, electronic noise filtering, and remote sensing. By the way, uh, I've muted everybody. You can certainly use the chat to communicate any questions. And at the end, uh, we can open it up for any, any uh, verbal questions. Common capacitors are capacitors like ceramic capacitors, film capacitors, tantalum and electrolytic capacitors. And um, there are different materials that are used as the dielectric in this capacitor. Some are glass dielectric, ceramics, or another material certainly, plastic film, paper, mica, air, different types of dielectrics in the capacitor. The basic construction, of course, is the insulating material, the dielectric, and it's sandwiched between, of course, the two electrodes. They're classified by uh, mill standard specs, and the low value capacitors are typically the ceramics, tested usually at one kilohertz and one megahertz, all the way up to metallized plastic, tantalum electrolytic, and aluminum electrolytics. The aluminums you've seen, you've seen they look like the size of a 16 ounce soft drink can. Um, they they uh, have uh, a lot of capability, microfarads, sometimes into the farads, uh, a lot of storage of energy that they may use in many different types of applications. And they range from the picofarads, uh, which is a very low capacitance with a very uh, high impedance to Farads, which is a very low impedance and a very high capacitance. The L in LCR is for inductor. And an inductor is a passive electronic component which is capable of storing electrical energy in the form of magnetic energy, unlike the capacitor. And basically it uses a conductor that is wound into a coil and when the electricity flows into the coil from left to right, this generates a magnetic field in the clockwise direction. Inductors are used extensively with capacitors and resistors to create filters for analog circuits and in signal processing. Inductors can also be used in motors by creating mechanical energy from its electrical and magnetic energy. They're used as energy storage devices that store energy in their magnetic field in fixed voltage applications such as computers. The last device in LCR is the R. It's a resistor. It's a device that slows down current. It, it lets us precisely control amounts of current, am amounts of current resistance into electrical circuits. And a resistor works by converting electrical energy into heat which is basically dissipated into the air. So the main function of a resistor is to control the flow of current to other components. In this particular diagram, you can see a battery applying uh, voltage current to an LED. And so if um, you didn't have the resistor in the circuit and too much current flowed through the LED, it would destroy the LED. So it's used to limit the current. Now the resistors can be uh, over nine orders of magnitude from the nano ohms, very, very small resistance, up to peta ohms, a very, very high resistant, resistance. When you look at LCR measurements, you're typically looking at a primary parameter, which is a major electrical characteristics like LCR or impedance, 
um, and a secondary parameter like dissipation factor or quality of the inductor, um, ESR of the capacitor, phase angle. Uh, so that's typically how they are displayed on an LCR meter. Um, inductance is measured in Henry's, capacitance in Farad's, resistance in Ohm's, and reactance uh, can be the effective resistance of inductors and capacitors. The DCR is measured in ohms. Some LCR meters will give you DCR parameter capability. Many won't. Uh, the ESR is the equivalent series of the AC loss measured in ohms. And the phase angle is the relationship between the resistance and the reactance. This is some terminology uh, that everyone should understand. The device under test of the UUT is the unit under test. When you hook up an LCR meter to something to measure, what is that device? Um, now there are certain important things to measure that device and there's usually mill standards that tell you what voltage, what frequency, um, you should test the capacitors, the inductors, the resistors at. So the test signal level is basically the voltage or the current level of the internal signal of the generator in the LCR meter. The test frequency is the rate of change of the signal from the generator. Test frequency is how fast AC changes direction. The basic accuracy is the difference between the measured value or reading in the true or accepted value under optimum test conditions. Optimum test conditions are very challenging to get in an LCR meter unless you're doing everything by the book. And we'll talk a little more about that in a few slides. The measurement speed is how fast you want to make the measurement. Now, people in a, an engineer in a research and development lab doesn't really need speed. He needs accuracy and capability of the LCR meter versus a production application at a capacitor manufacturer or a choke coil inductor manufacturer, they want to test these as fast as possible. Why? They're testing millions, billions a week, potentially. And the display is the visual indicator uh, on the instrument. This is a digital display we're looking at, but there's also older LCR meters that started back in the probably 30s, 40s, 50s uh, that had analog displays. The basic accuracy is really the sweet spot that you, you're trying to find, but the basic accuracy is dependent on what the test signal voltage is, what frequency you're measuring at, how fast are you making the measurement, what is the basic impedance of the device under test. So these are very important. If you want to get the best accuracy, don't test at 20 measurements a second. You know, don't test at the extreme end of the range for impedance or voltage. Um, so again, the mill standards pretty much tell you where the component should be tested. Typical LCR meters have a basic accuracy of between plus or minus 0.05% and plus or minus 0.5%. But the sweet spot is pretty critical. And some folks might advertise that sweet spot but when you drift away from the sweet spot and you change the voltage to the high end of the range or the speed or the impedance of the device, then the accuracy is certainly not gonna be what is specified as the sweet spot. The sweet spot I'm referring to pretty much with most LCR meters is one volt AC RMS, one kilohertz test frequency, one measurement a second, and the impedance of the device you're measuring between 10 ohms and 100 K ohms. You start drifting from that for whatever reason, and you may need to certainly, then the point, you know, the accuracy specified by the LCR meter changes. One of the most important things for an accurate LCR meter versus maybe some handheld LCR meters is a Kelvin four terminal measurement. And that was invented by a Lord Kelvin very many years ago. And basically it takes the current high and the potential high lead 
and basically shorts them together on one side of the device and the current low and the potential low lead on the other side of the device. And so you can make a very accurate four terminal measurement. And one pair of leads applies the current to the device while the other pair of leads measures and senses the voltage across the device. And this removes the series inductance and resistance error factor, including contact resistance. It also removes any straight capacitance factor. So again, precision measurements require techniques like a four terminal Kelvin measurement, Kelvin connection. This shows one of our LCR meters and all of them have four terminal uh, measurements, Kelvin measurements. Uh, you can see on the right side is the, the high potential, high current to uh, shorted together to an uh, alligator clip, Kelvin clip. And then on the left-hand side, the low current and the low potential shorted to uh, another Kelvin clip. One goes to one side of the capacitor, one goes to the other side of the capacitor. This is critical. And when you get up to higher frequencies, as you'll see, the, 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 the length of the cable is, is even more critical than making a one kilohertz LCR measurement. But there's another thing that's critical too when you're making LCR measurements to make sure that you're making the most accurate measurements that you need to make. And it's called an op open short circuit correction. And we have this of course on all our LCR meters. And basically we wanna show the LCR meter what infinite impedance is. And we also wanna show it what no impedance is. So it has a reference. Um, it's a compensation technique. It's almost like zeroing your scale to zero before you stand on it. I mean, we all wanna zero it to minus 10 pounds and feel good about ourselves, but um, you gotta get it right to zero. And that's what we're doing here. When the test leads are open, the residual admittance or Y is measured. When the test leads are shorted, the residual impedance is measured. Uh, and when the device is measured, these two residuals calculate the actual impedance of the device under test. Another um, important uh, parameter is series or parallel. Do I make my measurement in series or do I make my measurement in a parallel circuit? And it really depends on the application, the impedance of the device. Um, in general, measurements on passive components, the series value usually specified by mill standards and the DC value of a resistance using AC measurements, they recommend the series measurement of the low valued resistors but parallel measurements of high-valued resistance. For capacitors, um, when you're measuring uh, low-valued uh, capacitance, parallel measurements are preferred to get the most accurate measurements. And a lot of it goes back to where is it gonna be used in the circuit? Is it gonna be used in a series um, application or in parallel with all sorts of other types of electronic devices to control the flow of electronic current, right? Acroma has eight different models of capacitance meters. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about each one. The first series is the low frequency bench model series called the 11021 and the 11021-L. They're almost identical, except the L can give you a little higher frequency than the 11021. But these are excellent uh, LCR meters for automatic production, quality assurance, even simple measurements in R&D type labs. And they can measure most of the parameters uh, companies are measuring, inductance, capacitance, resistance, of course, but also impedance, quality factor, dissipation factor, ESI, reactance and phase angle. The basic accuracy of this meter is 0.1% and it has a very fast measurement speed of 75 milliseconds. Not our fastest, but quite fast. So that's a pretty fast measurement, especially if you're doing high speed production type testing. Uh, it can interface to a computer and it does with a standard RS-232 interface, but we also have optional GPIB and handler interface. 
It can also sort uh, into different bins. A lot of companies might want to sort one percenters into the one percent bin, two percenters into the two percent bin, so forth and so on. You can also do pass fail judgment. It uh, has a real simple user interface. It has, of course, open short zer circuit zeroing, which is pretty important. And it can be protected against charge caps that might be thrown on the front end of this uh, to a pair of Kelvin cables up to one joule. The next couple meters are the 11022 and the 11025 LCR meters. And they're a little step above uh, because they can test more parameters than everything that the 11021 and 021-Ls can test. They can also test DC resistance uh, of resistors or inductors, turns ratios of little transformer devices. And they can also go higher up to 100 kilohertz. Uh, you can range the voltage for these models from 10 millivolts all the way up to one volt AC RMS. Uh, it is also a 0.1% basic accuracy LCR meter like uh, the previous two. And you can look at things like uh, transformer test parameters with the 11025, turns ratios, DCR, DC resistance, mutual inductance. Uh, it's even faster than the other meters. It's 21 millisecond measurement uh, capability. And it also has the ability for inductive devices to adjust the DC bias current internally to 200 milliamps. So a lot of our customers, and we'll talk a little more about that, when they measure inductors, they're applying a DC bias to the inductive component to see how the inductance change, and it'll usually drop. Uh, we have a, a, another uh, a piece of test instrumentation called the 1320 bias current source that has direct control capability by the 11025 uh, meter. It also has op open short circuit zeroing, bin sorting, pass fail, and it has standard GPIB, standard RS-232, and a standard handler interface. Um, also a lab view driver to control it. So this is a perfect uh, piece of test equipment for LCR measurements uh, in quality, production, incoming inspection, even R&D type applications. This is a picture of the 11025 with a little fixture that we sell, a little transformer turns fixture. Plugs right onto the four BNCs on the front of the 11025 instruments, come up, comes off with a set of cables that can now do transformer turn ratios on little, uh, little transformer type devices. So very powerful um, if you have to measure transformers for turn ratios or DC resistance or mutual inductance. Uh, we have a great many fixtures we'll talk about that um, can accommodate all sorts of different types of components. Now to our flagship high frequency models. Uh, these are uh, just invented basically in the last three, four years, I'd say. And they are wonderful meters for high frequency applications. Many requirements don't require up to a megahertz, but many require over a megahertz. And we have three high frequency models, the 11050-5M to five megahertz, the 11050, which is a 10 megahertz meter, and the 11050, which is a 30 megahertz meter. And they can do all the parameters that we were talking about before, um, except it won't do trans transformer turn ratios, but it will do DCR, and uh, except on the 30 megahertz model. When you get up to the higher frequencies, uh, it's a challenge to um, get that far away from DC and make DCR measurements, certainly. Uh, we, can, we can accommodate frequencies with these high frequency models from 60 hertz to 30 megahertz. And uh, the AC voltage starts at 10 millivolts to five volts, except for the 30 megahertz model, we can go from 10 millivolts to one volt. The basic accuracy is 0.1% for the five and 10 megahertz model and 1.5% for the 30 megahertz model. This model is quite fast. <clears throat> it's accurate, but it's fast if you wanna put it into an automatic production type application. Seven millisecond measurement time. 
So you can see capacitor manufacturers, inductor manufacturers that are spitting these out by the millions and billions a week. They need fast throughput. But it can also be used as, a, as an R&D type uh, model where you're looking at uh, devices uh, up to 30 megahertz uh, for impedance measurements. Uh, this particular one has three output impedance modes and we can connect it to a 1320 bias current source directly and we can also interface it into a test system. We'll talk more about that in a, a little bit. It has open short circuit zeroing, which we spoke about before, and it has a thing called load correction. Load correction is basically showing the meter a gold standard. Let's say I had a uh, capacitor, excuse me, I'm drinking a little water for a second. A capacitor that was <clears throat> spec at one megahertz and was one picofarads. And I wanna, I wanna really get precise now. We can load correct. We can put into the meter that this capacitor right here that you're measuring is one picofarad at one megahertz and it stores that. And now it can compare you know, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions of capacitors to that gold standard. So it's a nice feature for um, uh, production test or even in a research and development lab. It can do bin sorting, it can do pass fail. It has standard handler interface. It has RS-232 interface. It has um, the ability to store <coughs> um, measurements um, and um, it has a standard external bias current control interface for DC, um, DC uh, current bias. It also has an optional GPIB and uh, a local area network interface, an ethernet interface. It's ideal for high speed production tests, but we're selling to R&D applications, incoming inspection, uh, many different environments that require the higher frequency measurements. The high frequency 11050 LCR meters have six uh, unique test modes that I have not seen in many other LCR meters. Um, the first basic mode is to measure the capacitance and dissipation factor, let's say, of a capacitor. And it has a limit comparison mode where you can set up uh, from here to here is a pass, below here is a, is a low, above here is a high. So you have the ability now to compare and sort components on a limit basis. It also has the ability to sort into different bins, bin one through bin eight. I want to put all my 1% inductors into bin one. I would have put all my 2% inductors into bin two. The next mode is the LCRZ scan mode. And it's designed for frequency dependent and voltage dependent parameters. So many capacitors, of course, many inductors at different frequencies and different voltages uh, have different impedances and different capacitance and inductance values. So this particular mode, um, if you want to look at scanning, uh, I think it's up to nine sets of frequency and voltage, uh, you can do that looking at the inductance and the resistance or the capacitance and the dissipation factor, whatever you're looking at, you can do that uh, to see the sensitivity to the test frequency and the test voltage of the components. You can always have a primary and a secondary parameter. The third test mode is a bias scan mode. And so uh, you can use an internal uh, uh, current capability that we have up to 200 milliamps or an external unit that we sell called the 1320 goes up to 20 amps. And it's designed basically for testing for saturation characteristics of magnetic components. When you apply a DC bias to magnetics, the inductance changes and, and at a certain point, the inductor can get into saturation. So this has the ability to really analyze the frequency and the current of the inductor um, at many different um, uh, 
frequency and current settings and, and really examine and understand the inductor in detail. Great for R&D type applications, certainly. The next one is the parameter sweep mode, which I like a lot. The parameter sweep mode is designed for plotting various characteristic curves. You can plot, plot up to 401 points. You can do certainly a, a, a plot, but you can also do a table. You can switch back and forth. Um, you can easy, easily store uh, the reference curves and recall the function to compare two curves to each other. So if you're really analyzing components uh, and you like to see uh, how the frequency, when the frequency changes, how the capacitance and ductance changes, uh, this is an excellent feature. And um, again, uh, you can cursor it uh, and switch it to table mode uh, with the press of a button if you need to see the table. Now the next mode is called the uh, dual frequency mode. And the dual frequency mode is designed for calculating the percentage variance between measurements at two different frequencies. <clears throat> Remember I mentioned that uh, inductors, capacitors at different frequencies, they're a different inductance and capacitance value. So um, <clears throat> this mode allows you to calculate the percentage variance between uh, measurements of a capacitor and inductor at two different frequencies. And so um, I might want to look at maybe one megahertz versus 10 megahertz. How does my inductor change? What is the value now? Will it work at my 10 megahertz circuit? Will it work in my, my one megahertz circuit? What else do I have to design into the circuit to make sure this inductor is the one for this particular circuit? And the last mode is the bias compare mode. And it's designed for calculating the inductance drop percentage of a magnetic component while DC current flows through it. And we can do a pass-fail judgment, um, but it's effective uh, to sort out the inductor with worse saturation uh, characteristics. And different inductors have different saturation, different values of inductance at different frequencies. So under a DC bias, you can compare uh, the inductance or, uh, you know, uh, for um, the variance. I'm talking a lot about external DC bias, DC bias current, which a lot of folks do uh, on inductive type devices. And so we have, and we have for many years, a 1320 bias current source um, that you can control by the 11050, but it also can be controlled by the 11022 and the 11025. If you don't need the high frequency of the 11050 high frequency LCR meters. And there are even slave units that can be controlled by the master. So the LCR meter controls the 1320 DC bias current source and um, and that is connected to the test fixture. I'll show you a picture in a second. Uh, we can output up to 100 amps for the, for the um, 11022 and the 11025. So we can build you a system for 100 amp, up to 100 amps DC bias and up to 300 amps with the 11050 high frequency meters. And this is basically a shot of one of the uh, two that can uh, connect from the high frequency uh, meters, uh, the, the five megahertz and the 10 megahertz. Um, you can measure up to 10, up to one megahertz with the DC current bias source. So the front end of the, uh, let's say it's called the five megahertz meters connected to the four BNCs on the 1320. And then the device under test is connected to the bottom uh, banana plugs, binding posts, on the 1320 and now it's a little system. The 11050, five megahertz will control the uh, DC current bias, <coughs> excuse me, to the fixture or to the device under test. And then uh, you can take measurements and use some of these modes we've been talking about for DC current biasing on an inductor. <clears throat> but we also have uh, DC, uh, voltage bias. 
because capacitors uh, don't typically use a current bias, they use a voltage bias. And <clears throat> we can provide you with a DC power supply that will apply 35 volts uh, to the external uh, of the five or 10 megahertz LCR meter. You enable on the LCR meter bias voltage enabled, and now you can set the DC power source to whatever you want and provide a DC bias to the capacitor um, with just the DC uh, power meter and a uh, LCR meter. So a lot of people, uh, you know, the, the capacitor manufacturers certainly are providing DC bias. It could be a couple volts uh, to every single capacitor that they test, the tantalum people especially. Um, and other people in research laboratories want to see how this capacitor may perform under a DC bias. <clears throat> so we have solutions for DC current bias as well as DC, DC voltage bias. This slide talks about uh, the three high frequency meters and where they're kind of used. The five megahertz meter can start at 60 hertz and go up to five megahertz and it's kind of universal unless you need higher frequency or lower frequency, but in terms of high frequency, five megahertz is a pretty good uh, LCR meter, a uh, very, very price competitive unit. The middle one is the 11050 that can start at one kilohertz and go up to 10 megahertz. Um, you can see an automatic handler. I talk about a lot of things about handler interfaces. Well, that's a handler with a reel of components that could uh, connect or is connecting to one of our LCR meters uh, and doing high speed uh, capacitance tense testing. And then in a laboratory, the 30 megahertz is quite versatile because it can start at 75 kilohertz and go up to 30 megahertz. So you can see how um, your components react, especially from one megahertz to 30 megahertz and to see if they are applicable. It's better to catch the R&D when you're designing the device and you know, the, the, the uh, widget that you're making um, certainly in the design than to not have tested it or tested it with a handheld meter and not known that it's not, it's doing something funny between 10 megahertz and 20 megahertz. Uh, it's much better to do that before certainly you, um, you pick the right capacitor for the right design in your widget, right? So. Now we've been talking uh, about the LCR meters, but a uh, very important thing with the LCR meters is how do you connect the LCR meters to the device and the test? Very important, obviously. Um, so we have all sorts of cables and fixtures um, and uh, bias current sources that we talked about, interfaces for the uh, in instrument. So um, we'll talk a little bit now about the accessories for the different LCR meters. First one is a Kelvin clip lead that's usually good for one megahertz. Why? Because, you know, one megahertz, uh, you need shielded cables, you need as short a distance between the device under test and the measurement electronics of our LCR meter, certainly. And so these are Kelvin clip, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Kelvin clip leads <clears throat> for one megahertz or below. And you can see that little box uh, there can, clip right in the front of uh, the LCR meters um, to hook it right there and, uh, and, and make a good connection to the LCR meter. The next um, cable is a high frequency cable. Anytime you're gonna use uh, above one megahertz to a 30 megahertz meter, we recommend uh, this particular cable. It has BNCs on one end, that will connect to the LCR meters BNCs, and it has SMA connectors on the other end, which will connect to maybe the handler or your own fixture you've designed. But the SMA connectors are semi-precision coaxial RF connectors uh, that were developed years ago, and they're like uh, almost like smaller BNCs, but they're very, very accurate. They have a low impedance, 50 ohms, and they're very accurate for high impedance measurements. You don't wanna take a cable that's good at one kilohertz and use it at 30 megahertz. Not a good idea, not gonna get the right uh, measurements. Um, 
have to use shielded coax and uh, as close as possible to the device under test. The next one are chip tweezers. I wouldn't recommend them above a megahertz, but below a megahertz, they're fine. Um, a lot of the components um, are surface mounted devices, certainly to save space on boards and, you know, and they're, they're, uh, they're small, right? They're very hard to pick up. I've, I've used these tweezers before um, and you pick them up and they might fling off of the tweezer. And so we'll show, we'll show you some other devices that are better for those type of applications when the surface mount device, which might be a ceramic capacitor is the size of a grain of sand, let's say, okay? But these are good for many tantalum and ceramic capacitors, even chip inductors at, a, at lower frequencies, less than a megahertz. Now, this is a uh, four terminal SMD device for chip components that I just mentioned. And in the middle, you see uh, a little hole there that the chip, the ceramic chip, the tantalum chip, the inductive chip goes into. And you can control the pressure on the chip. But um, Again, these chips these days can be very, very small. You can see next to the uh, manual tweezer on the right, how the size of some of them there, they're even smaller than that. Well, this fixture, nice enough, goes right to the, uh, the four BNCs on the front of our high frequency meters. And, um, and so you don't have any long distance, three meters of cable or anything to the device under test. And it can make a very accurate measurement on surface mount devices. And this is a leaded component test fixture that can accommodate axial capacitors, resistors, inductors, radial um, components, as well as um, uh, surface, uh, not, not surface mount devices, as well as uh, you can put these two black clips in there, one on the low side, one on the high side, and that can accommodate the axial component. And that again attaches right to the uh, high frequency LCR meters and the low, low frequency LCR meters to keep the distance to the measurement in electronics as close as possible. Now we're gonna skip off to our automated test systems. As I mentioned in the beginning, 25% of our business is automatic test equipment for power supplies, and loads, but also for high pot testers and LCR meters. We happen to be looking at an ATE uh, that has one of the high frequency chroma LCR meters at the top shelf. And then we have a master of the 1320 20, uh, amp DC bias. And under that, four slaves to give you a total of one, two, three, four, five times 20, 100 amps applied to the device under test. Now we can integrate these for you. Uh, we even have software capabilities. Um, we work closely with our um, manufacturing facility in designing exactly what the customer may want. Um, we can do fixturing for you. So we can provide just the instrument and you can test your components or we can provide the whole turnkey test system. On the right is the back of that particular test system. We do um, very clean wiring and we put it all together, soup to nuts, um, deliver it to you and you're ready to go. You can save measurement data, save test reports. You don't have to really do a thing yourself. A lot of our customers tell us, we're in this particular widget, uh, in, in this particular market to make widgets. We're not a, we're not a integration company this will just take us a lot of time and we may not do it that well. And so fine, we would love to do it for you. And we're experts, we're measurement experts and we're experts at putting together the ATE system. Um, let's see. This happens to be a capacitor test system that we can build for customers. Uh, it's called the 1820 series and we can configure a customized test systems. In other words, all the instruments uh, in this particular system right here might not be the final instruments that you want to perform your particular uh, testing application for your capacitors, resistors, and inductors. Well, we can configure what you might need, and uh, we do that. 
applications that require endurance or reliability of capacitors, high frequency applications, um, DC bias voltage application. We can go up to 5,000 volts with some customers. Um, temperature rising tests, um, uh, capacitor withstanding current tests, all controlled by software. So we have capabilities uh, that we would love to entertain if you don't have the time or maybe not the expertise or just don't want to do it yourself. We, we do this. This is our core competency. The next test system is the 8800. Again, we can configure the system. This can combine different testers and hardware per the test requirements. It also has the ability to do multi-channel scan testing for inductance, capacitance, and resistance with even turn ratios. Um, we can do insulation resistance testing, leakage inductance measurements. If we uh, configure a system for you, <clears throat> this can support, and maybe another couple racks, 320 channels, which is up to 840 channel scan modules um, to test that many devices at once. Uh, very high thru test throughput and simple user editable test programs. That's our 8800 model. And we talked a lot about bias current before. This is the a bias current test system that we can provide. Uh, the one on the left looks like it has 60 amps capability. The one on the right looks like it has uh, 100 amps. Uh, uh, yeah, DC bias uh, capability. Uh, so any people building inductors, coils, chokes that have to have high th throughput, uh, please uh, give us a call. We'd love to entertain a, a biased current system. Now, we also make uh, leakage current testers or IR meters for capacitors. These are usually for um, uh, different kinds of capacitors like electrolytics. They might test the leakage current. So the leakage current basically is the inverse of the insulation resistance. A low leakage current that you're measuring might be a high insulation resistance. This happens to show a picture of a um, 11200 capacitance leakage current IR meter hooked up to an electrolytic capacitor reading a leakage current of 162.2 uh, microamps. Um, and we have two models in this, but we just introduced a third. This is a six, uh, 650 volt model, volt DC model. We have an 800 volt DC model, model and we just introduced another 1000 volt DC model. It goes quite high in uh, resistance or quite low in leakage. And uh, this has a five, this particular model has a 500 milliamp charge current to quickly charge uh, the capacitor or whatever you're testing. Uh, and then it can measure leakage current from 0 0.001 microamps up to 20 milliamps. Uh, for insulation resistance, it goes up to 100 gig ohms on the high. And um, it's basically a constant current DC power source with the discharge function. It'll discharge the device certainly afterwards for safety. It's 0.3% basic accurate. And um, it's considered a surge voltage test function for electrolytic capacitors. It has bin sorting like the LCR meters, pass fail, standard RS-232 bus, and uh, an optional GPIB and handler interface. It's excellent for components in R&D or high-speed production and benchtop applications. We also make uh, a low resistance measurement uh, tool called the 16502 milliohmmeter. And the milliohmmmeter has a 0.05% basic accuracy. You can read down to um, one microohm and up to two megaohms with 4.5 digit resolution. It has a pulse test current mode to reduce thermal EMF effects. It has a DC test mode, which speeds up the measurement, measurements for inductive devices. It has a dry circuit mode for voltages limited to 20 millivolts. If you can't have the voltage, a high voltage hurt your device, then we can do a dry circuit test mode. It'll limit it to 20 millivolts that your device sees. It has temperature correction, because temperature is important when you're looking at low resistance measurements of different devices. It can do 65 millisecond test speeds, standard RS-232 interface. It has bin sorting function, pass fail, and also a LabVIEW driver to control it from a, a PC. Excellent for R&D applications, 
high speed production, income and inspection, coils, chokes, cables, connectors, switches, anything that requires low resistance measurements and temperature compensation. So we're getting towards the end here. You may be tired of hearing my voice, but I'm glad you, uh, you joined us today. How do you pick uh, an LCR meter? How do you pick the right one? There's so many choices. I mean, we have eight ourselves. Well, the frequency range is pretty critical. If you're not going over a megahertz, don't buy a meter that goes over a megahertz. But if you need to get over a megahertz, then you need either a 5, 10, or 30 if you come to Chroma. Um, we'll be coming out with higher frequency meters in time, but right now we have 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 30 megahertz. What voltage range do you need for the inductive devices for the um, different capacitors that you're measuring, right? It's important. If you buy a meter that doesn't have the voltage range, then you, know, you might have to buy a second meter. Um, what accuracy do you require? Um, you know, 0.1% is going to solve probably 99% of the applications. Sometimes I run into calibration labs that want to use the LCR meter as a transfer standard. Then they might want to try a 0.01% bridge from 1960, but there aren't, any, there aren't too many solutions out there for, for calibration, high, high accuracy calibration laboratories. You can certainly use ours as a transfer standard. You just gain, you're just losing maybe a little accuracy, but you could certainly use it. Um, how fast do you need to make the measurements? Um, we have speed specs on every single one that we mentioned. What parameters are you going to measure? Is it C, L, Z, or do you have to do DC um, resistance as well? Oh, okay. Do you have to do turn ratios? Okay. Now we're talking maybe it might be another LCR meter that we make. What is the measurement range? What's the low impedance that you think you'll be meaning, uh, meaning to measure? Uh, the low capacitance, the high capacitance? Um, same with inductance, resistance. Um, are you going to interface it? Most people that we market to now, they're really not pushing the, pushing the buttons on the front of the LCR meters or any of the power supplies or, or uh, loads that we offer. They're, they're hooking it up to a computer, either letting us build a system for them, building their own system, or you know, putting it on a bench with a computer control. So what kind of interface are you going to need? Do you like GPIB? Uh, do you like RS-232? You just want to use... Um, USB, Ethernet, uh, that's, that's a pretty important. And what is the application? Are you a high-speed production application? You might pick a different LCR meter than maybe an R&D lab or quality assurance or quality control application. Well, most of all, call us. We have experts that uh, can help talk you through it and pick the right um, instrument for your particular application. I know I'm talking to a lot of electrical engineers out there. I'm sure you can also certainly decide from our website uh, exactly what you kind of want. Um, but please, we'd love to talk to you, have a chat with you, and tell you what some of our other customers are using in similar applications. Um, where do you get information from Chroma? Well, we have uh, chromausa.com. Uh, we have instruction manuals, all free of charge, LCR guides. We have an excellent guide called uh, uh, the Guide uh, to LCR uh, Primer. And it, it just, it'll tell you everything you need to know. We did this in an hour. It might take you three or four hours to read the guide, but it's gonna tell you everything you know, need to know about LCR measurements. We have application notes, dozens and dozens for you. And of course the spec sheets. We have lab view drivers for a lot of our instruments, maybe, maybe one or two. Uh, of the instruments I talked to today. Um, and then we have 35 years of chroma test and measurement experience. We're dealing with uh, our factory in R&D center. We have hundreds of engineers that are developing the next maybe 100 megahertz LCR meter. So we have a lot of expertise and that's our claim to fame. It's, it's expertise on test and measurement. And we make, of course, we think the most robust quality equipment, but we appreciate you, you spending an hour with us, learning more about what we offer. Um, we know you have choices. Uh, we hope you at least call us when you have a, a requirement. And, uh, and uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. I think I'm going to try to open it up right now to any questions. I haven't even followed the chat. So thank you, Jarrell, for handling the chat. 
but I'm going to try to open it up right now to um, to questions. Uh, 